Hello again. Well, my grump for this month is all the exaggerated claims and even misinformation and uh, even, even downright alternative truths that have turned many of us into St. John's worrywart. This poor herb has had such bad press that I've heard that many of us are scared to even use it in clinical practice. What a pity, because I believe it's one of the most important herbs we can use, not just because of its effect on the nervous system, but it's also great for pain and it has antiviral effects. So imagine this clinical dilemma. You get a patient who's got a, a history of trigeminal neuralgia. Her conventional drug medication hasn't influenced uh, her attacks. It hasn't given her any benefit. Uh, you can see from the traditional writings and, and certainly my clinical experience is, is supporting that St. John's Ward is a key herb in the management of neuralgias like trigeminal neuralgia. But uh oh, she's also taking an SSRI, fluoxetine, for her depression. Do you then deny the patient her St. John's Ward or not? Are you a St. John's worrywart that would be worried out of that? important clinical benefit for that patient. So what are the key issues here? Well, the main concern of combining St. John's wort with antidepressant drugs is this thing called serotonin syndrome, where the drug increases serotonin in your brain and the misunderstanding is that St. John's wort uh, increases serotonin in your brain, so you end up with too much serotonin and you get this highly agitated state known as serotonin syndrome. Now, there's another consideration that's somewhat more valid with St. John's Ward, that it may increase the clearance of some drugs, but that makes them less effective. So that's not involved in serotonin syndrome. And that one is only certain preparations higher in hyperforin and above a threshold dose uh, of hyperforin. So as long as you moderate the dose of St. John's Ward, and it even if you want to be absolutely safe, as I've mentioned in a different posting this month, um, under Q&A, uh, if you want to be additionally safer, you can use a liquid of St. John's Wort that's extracted in, say, 45% alcohol, and that won't have much hyperforin anyway. So that second dot point of uh, St. John's Wort increasing the clearance of drugs, some drugs, and making them less effective, you can, you can avoid that. But it really is this whole thing about St. John's Wort and serotonin syndrome that, that gets up my nose and makes me totally grumpy. And, and it comes from this misinformation that was circulating around the turn of the century about St. John's Wort. For example, there was a 2001 article in a prestigious pharmaceutical journal that described St. John's Wort as nature's Prozac. But there are no credible studies supporting the proposition that St. John's Wort impairs any form of monoamine uptake, uh, much less serotonin specifically. Oh, look, look, this is a bit of test tube stuff, but in vitro non veritas, have a look at my other postings. No, no animal studies and certainly no clinical studies support that as a mechanism for St. John's Wort. And when challenged by this, as you can see, there's a uh, reference to is a, is, 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 uh, uh, a letter that was sent in uh, response to that, um, the authors backed down and agreed, hey, it's not nature's Prozac, but, you know, the kind of damage is done. If St. John's was nature's Prozac and, and you've got real Prozac and you mix two two together, it's trouble. Well, let's take a little sidebar and say, how does St. John's Wort really work in the brain? We don't know. It's likely to be quite complex and different to the current theories and models of antidepressant activity. So think about this. About 30 years ago, some scientists got together and put together a theory that may be inhibiting uh, serotonin reuptake uh, in parts of the brain might help depression. And they then developed a drug and tested that theory. But that hasn't even been proven to be the beneficial way that these, dr these drugs act in depression much less St. John's wort, which being a herb, it's had its mechanism inbuilt since time immemorial and just some little fad from pharmacological scientists doesn't make that the way that St. John's wort necessarily acts. Highly unlikely, in fact. 
And don't forget, as I mentioned, the test tube studies that showed this for St. John's wort, they're irrelevant for herbs, especially in this case, due to the highly complex bioavailability issues. And in particular, the blood-brain barrier. None of these sort of compounds that are supposedly doing this in the test tube for St. John's wort are likely to cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, <clears throat> so these test tube studies showing effects of St. John's wort on neurotransmitter uptake or levels are highly, highly dubious. So one of the key planks of the concerns that argues you can't mix St. John's wort with antidepressants is because of case reports. But before we look at them, let's look at uh, in vivo models and controlled clinical trials. And there's currently no evidence from either in vivo models, animal models, or from controlled clinical trials that St. John's wort acts with any class of antidepressant drug apart from causing faster clearance of amitriptyline. So that's not likely to cause a hyper arousal, hyper stimulant effect. It just makes the drug a little bit less effective. So the proposed interaction of St. John's wort is clearly lacking in biological plausibility and is entirely based when you, when you drill down on these few case reports in the literature. If you look at these case reports, they're all low quality and of uncertain relevance. So much so that when a group of psychiatrists, Canadian psychiatrists a few years ago, were reviewing all the reported cases of serotonin syndrome, they dismissed all of the St. John's Wort reports as not meeting the criteria for serotonin syndrome. You know, not crazy, wacky herbalists, psychiatrists. Psychiatrists did that. And it's particularly noteworthy that all of the case reports are clustered between 1998 and 2000, when St. John's Wort was actually selling so highly that it was challenging um, the market of antidepressant drugs. And there's been nothing published in the mainstream peer-reviewed literature since. Nothing. Zero zilch. I've looked several times. If there is something, it's only happened in the last few months because I, I haven't looked. Uh, it was a few months ago when I last looked. But largely, there's been nothing. Now, what does that make you think? Either wittingly or unwittingly, elements of the medical profession set out to do a job on this herb that was so good for improving mood, especially in mild to moderate cases, that was threatening their credibility. I'll leave that thought with you. Hmm. I'm not one of who's really into conspiratory theories, but all I can say on that one is, hmm. Okay, what about St. John's Ward increasing drug clearance? I, I've, I've mentioned that uh, already. So thank you for listening to my grump. And my grump is, you medical kids out there with your misinformation, you get off my St. John's Ward. Thank you.